Hi, in this video let's discuss various miscellaneous topics pertaining to the syllabus in oral pathology and medicine part 1. So coming to the first question, let's discuss in question and answer format so that when I discuss the question I can cover two or three subtopics pertaining to that particular question. So coming to the first one, globulomaxillary cyst is option A, soft tissue cyst present often between maxillary lateral incisor and cuspid teeth. Option B, often present between incisor and cuspid teeth but is a bone cyst. Option C, a cyst present between the midline of the palate. Option D, a cyst present in the incisor canal. So first let's see what is a globulomaxillary cyst. A globulomaxillary cyst is also called as premaxillary maxillary cyst. It appears as an inverted pear-shaped radiolucency usually between maxillary lateral incisor and maxillary canine and histologically it resembles carotenoid odontogenic tumor. The former name of this carotenoid odontogenic tumor is OKC. So now let's come on to the options again. So globulomaxillary cyst, it's a bone cyst. So it's not a soft tissue cyst, so we can rule out this option. And coming to option B, it's often present between incisor and cuspid teeth, but is a bone cyst. So since I have shown you on a radiograph, it's clearly present between the maxillary lateral and the canine. And option C is a cyst present between the midline of the palate. So this is not present in the midline, it's present between the lateral incisor and canine. And option D, a cyst present in the incisive canal. The cyst that is present in the incisive canal is incisive canal cyst or nasopalatine cyst or median anterior maxillary cyst. So this is about globulomaxillary cyst and its radiographic appearance. This is very important, right? Now let's move on to the next question. Which of the following features are of nasoallular cyst? Option A, an ovoid shaped radiolucency above the lateral incisor and canine teeth. Erosion of base above lateral incisor and canine teeth. An inverted funnel shaped radiolucent lesion above the roots of lateral incisor and canine teeth. And option D, a pear shaped radiolucent lesion between roots of lateral incisor and canine teeth. Nasoallular cyst, also called as nasolabial or clistad cyst, it's a soft tissue cyst, so it doesn't have any particular radiographic appearance. However, because of the growth of this soft tissue cyst, there can be erosion of the base of the maxilla. So the erosion of maxilla appears as a radiolucent area usually at the lateral and canine region so we can see here in this image a radiolucent area adjacent to the laterals and canines so this erosion or this radiolucence is because of the erosion of the base of the maxilla so now let's come on to the options it's an ovoid shaped radiolucency. It doesn't have any particular shape. Ovoid shaped radiolucency or heart shaped radiolucency is a characteristic feature of nasopalatine cyst, but not nasoallular cyst. Erosion of base above lateral incisor and canine teeth. Just now I have seen the occlusal radiograph where there is erosion of base of maxilla at the area of lateral incisor and canine. So this is the appropriate option or answer for this question. Now let's rule out other options also. An inverted funnel shaped radiolucent lesion above the roots of lateral incisor and canine teeth. It's not inverted funnel shape, right? So we can rule out this option also. And finally, a pear shaped radiolucent lesion between roots of lateral incisor and canine teeth. This is the characteristic feature of globulomaxillary cyst but not nasoallular cyst. So this is about nasoallular cyst. Now let's see what is nasopalatine cyst. So nasopalatine cyst appears as a heart-shaped radiolucency present within the incisive canal. So this particular shape is characteristic feature of nasopalatine cyst. And this nasopalatine cyst is also called as incisive canal cyst or median anterior maxillary cyst. Now coming to the next question, facial edema, calitis granulomatosa, and a fissured tongue characterize which of the following syndromes? So option A, Frey, option B, Melkerson Rosenthal, option C, Triacher Collins, option D, none of the above. So first let's see what is Melkerson Rosenthal syndrome. So this syndrome is characterized by triad of facial or lip swelling which is called as chelitis granulomatosa, fissured tongue and facial paralysis and in some cases there can be swelling of genitalia also. So these symptoms are characteristic features of Melkerson Rosenthal syndrome. Now let's see what is Frey and what is Triachocolin syndrome. Frey syndrome is also called as Bilarger syndrome or Dupuy syndrome or auriculotemporal syndrome or Frey-Bilarger syndrome. 
there is gastritis sweating in patients suffering from this particular syndrome because of damage to the auriculotemporal nerve. So when there is any surgery in an around parotid gland, so there can be damage to the auriculotemporal nerve which is anatomically present over there. This auriculotemporal nerve usually supplies parasympathetic nerve fibers to sweat glands of the scalp and also supplies to the parotid gland parotid salivary gland. So because of the damage to the auriculotemporal nerve, there can be switching of the functions of this auriculotemporal nerve and instead of stimulating the parotid gland, it stimulates the cutaneous sweat glands. The thought of food or the thought of hunger, there can be redness and sweating or the skin adjacent to the parotid gland region. So this is called as gustatory sweating. So these are characteristic features, symptoms of Frey's syndrome. Now let's see what is Triacher-Colin syndrome. It's also called as mandibulofacial dysostosis. So it's an autosomal dominant congenital disorder with characteristic features. There can be downward slanting of palpebral fissures. There can be hyperplasia of zygomatic bones and also mandible. There can be microtia or underdeveloped external ear or pinna. And there can be coloboma of lower eyelids, that is presence of holes and there can be absence of eyelashes medial to the defect and these are the characteristic symptoms of patients suffering from Triacher-Colin syndrome, right? Now let's see a diagram based question which was asked previously in the latest APBG 2015. Which condition is depicted in the CT picture given? So this is a computer tomographic image of mandible as you can see horseshoe shaped structure radio opaque structure with mandibular teeth and they are asking which condition this particular CT picture is depicting the options are mandibular tori, torus palatinus, complex odontoma, silolithiasis as you can see this is the base of the skull and this is your mandibular arch you can see some peculiar radio opacities on the lingual aspect of this mandible so that's nothing but mandibular tori so tori are nothing but bony exostosis or outgrowths of cortical plates or cortical bone usually on the lingual aspect of the mandible at the premolar molar region and clinically it appears in this fashion above the myelohyoid muscle attachment in the region of premolars and molars. So these are mandibular tori. Whereas torus palatinus or palatine tori are those exostosis which are present usually along the midline of palate or on the palate. And then complex odontum and compound odontum. The reason why I am discussing these is because we have these as options in the following question. So I have seen mandibular tori clinically. We have seen torus palatinus clinically. And now let's discuss complex odontoma and silolithiasis also. So odontome, it's nothing but a tumor of odontogenic tissue involving even the ectomesenchyme. So we have complex odontome and compound odontome. As you can see in complex odontome, there is no particular tooth-like structure. There is a haphazardly arranged radio opacities and usually complex odontomes are present in posterior mandible, right? And now coming to compound odontome, here you can see that we have definite tooth-like structures. We can differentiate or we can have enamel, dentin and cementum-like tissues present over the particular area. And you can clearly see that we can differentiate them as small tooth-like structures. And these structures or compound odontome is usually found in anterior part of maxilla. So this is present more towards the posterior part of mandible. The incidence is more there. But in case of compound odontum, the incidence is greater in anterior part of maxilla. And we have another option in the same question regarding silolithiasis. Silolithiasis also called as salivary calliculi. Here we can see various hydroxyapatite crystals getting deposited, especially in the lower submandibular gland duct or Wharton's duct, right? So this is in brief about various clinical and radiographic images of the conditions given in the options. Now let's see another question. The condition highlighted by the arrow in the occlusal radiograph in an 8 year old child could be due to. So here we have an arrow pointing out towards this structure and the question is the occlusal radiograph depicts which of the following structures. Non-vital tooth, impacted tooth, ghost tooth, mesiodens. So as you can see clearly, this particular peculiar structure is present between the 
maxillary central incisors in the midline and you can see that the crown is shorter and even the root is very short comparatively. So all these are radiographic features of a supernumerary tooth called as mesiodens. So mesiodens is a supernumerary tooth usually present in the midline between the maxillary central incisor. So mesiodens is the appropriate answer. Non-vital teeth cannot be diagnosed radiographically unless and until there are some radiographic changes periapically. But non-vital tooth as such will not use radiograph for diagnosis. Coming to ghost teeth, ghost teeth are seen characteristically in a condition called as regional odontodysplasia where there is improper growth of enamel and dentin. The teeth are very brittle and enamel and dentin appear extremely thin and they have this characteristic ghost like appearance with enlarged pulp chambers and root canals. So these ghost teeth are seen in case of regional odontodysplasia. So, so far we have discussed a few subtopics and in the subsequent videos let's try to cover more and more subtopics. Thank you.